church is becoming aware to this whole move that's happening even online. I'm, I'm fascinated. By the way, every church that had to transition to more online ministry, can we just give it up to every pastor and leader? Where we've heard this forever, like, we're going to go online, we're going to go online. All it took was a, a little virus to make sure everybody was online. Isn't that incredible? Like less than like, it was so fascinating how quickly ministry became online. If you did not have an online ministry before, you definitely have one now. But here's the fascinating part, you guys. The fascinating part is, I want to give you some testimonies. And the greatest part about this is I can't take credit for a single one of them. Because three months ago, probably about, maybe a little bit more than that, three and a half months ago, um, I was at my house. We were talking about the coronavirus. And has anybody ever done the moping prayer before? You're in your house. You feel like you're praying. You're not, you're not really praying. You're complaining. Oh, God, what happened? You know, we got word that our schedule was going to be canceled, and, and we talked to all of our friends, and they said, Sammy, we have to cancel. I remember going month by month by month, looking at our calendar full. We were full for eight months doing evangelistic events, doing events all over the world, and, and it felt like within a week, everything was canceled. And I'm at home thinking, God, what is going on? And I'm walking around. We got an island in our little island in our house, and I'm walking around thinking, oh, God, why did this happen to me? What's going on? Lord, this is an attack. I, I bind the enemy. I bind, I, I bound everything, man. I think I even bound McDonald's. Like, I, I man. <laughs> and I remember my wife. How about your wife today, man, is the good-looking voice of the Holy Spirit? Because my wife said, honey, when, whenever she says, honey, I know I'm in trouble. She says, honey, I love you. Then I know I'm about to hear something I don't like. She said, what are you doing? And it hit me. I said, what do you mean? What am I doing? I'm praying. She's like, that's not praying. She's like, you're complaining about your situation. She said, you're focusing on all the things that you feel like you don't have. She said, your breakthrough will not come when you focus on the things that you don't have. Your breakthrough will come when you focus up with the things that are in your hand right now. And she said, you've got an office and you've got a computer screen and you've been talking about doing things online. It's time to go online. I said, I don't want to go online. Everybody's going to go on. I don't want to go online. Like, I'm going to talk to a computer screen. She said, Sammy Robinson, right now people need hope. And you're driving me and the kid's crazy. Get out. <laughs> that was my encounter from the Lord, friends, right there. And I go into my office, probably like many of you. You're looking at this next season of your life and you're thinking, what do I do? And it, it doesn't feel the same. It doesn't look the same. I don't get the engagements. I don't get the laugh. You know, you, it's one thing to get a laughing emoji on an online session. It's another thing to actually engage the room, feel the energy. And here I am. I feel over my head, underqualified. I started off with an iPhone camera that I was looking at the wrong part of the camera. And people thought I had a vision problem. <laughs> and the first week, I was speaking hope. And people thought I was talking to them, but I was actually talking to me. Because the truth is, you can't minister hope until your hope's been restored. You can't minister peace until your peace is restored. And I feel like so often in life, we're in these moments where God's trying to get our attention and remind us of the things, especially right now, that really matter. Can I tell you what really matters right now? I've got three amazing little girls, six and under, that absolutely love me. I've got a wife that loves me. I, you know, we, as Christians, we have peace, we have joy. And I remember sharing this online and, and people being encouraged. People started to join. We started doing prophetic ministry online. And uh, that was a whole different thing, prophesying over icons, not even be able to see you. I have no idea who you are, what's going on. And I'm having encounters and I'm prophesying this stuff. And everybody thinks I'm cool inside. Like if you could see, praise God that the camera only shows from here up. Because 95% of the time when I'm praying over people, I'm grabbing my leg and I'm pinching myself. Do you know why? Because I'm scared. Because I'm nervous about what I'm going to say because I can't see you, I can't feel you, and I have to prophesy by faith to someone that I do not know. And I don't know about you, but there's words that have been released from prophets like Paul Cain talking about there's a nameless, faceless generation that God's raising up. And I'm looking online, I'm like, this is it. There are people that are online 
today, you can't see their face. You can't see any, no, no expressions. And then you wait. Does this make sense to you? And every time I'm like, oh, please let it work. Please let it work. Please let it work. And time and time again, Jesus is always faithful. People are like, that's exactly right. This is what's going on. And we'd pray for people. We'd get testimonies after. I was struggling with depression, and now depression's lifted. I had pain in my body. Now it's gone. And all of a sudden, I, I thought, God, the, what an opportunity. I remember, I'll be straight up real with everybody here today. I, I Probably the first month, I repented. I thought for too long, this, a pulpit and a microphone, is what made ministry. And I'll tell you what happened with me when in the initial season, I, I got a love back for ministry that I never even knew that I had. Sometimes the best thing to do in seasons like this is when you, when you jump in both feet, you realize, you're like, God, this is why I got into it. We're, we're called to administer hope and love and peace. And I remember the first time we did an altar call online. And I'm like, God speaks to me. He's like, you're going to do altar calls online. I'm like, how do you do that? Just like a service. I'm like, God, I can't see anybody. He's like, just do it and wait. You know that when you do like television or anything, you're not supposed to have dead air. So I'm doing all this stuff. I share a testimony and I'm like, if you want to accept Jesus or if, if you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, say yes, Jesus. And I was like, oh Lord, let it work. And I'm smiling and I can't see anybody and it's only me in a room. And there's nothing for like 30 seconds. 30 seconds of dead air is a long time. And Robinson's, we like to talk. And if we get nervous, we want to talk more. <laughs> but all of a sudden, you start seeing, yes, Jesus. You start getting testimonies of 16-year-old girls that want to kill themselves. One girl wanted to kill herself, that she actually tried. She was in the hospital the night before what we call our e-revival. We had one last night. And we do a revival service online at night. We have worship, but we just pray over people, and we have a blast. There was a girl on the very first one. She cut her wrist the night before because she said, the pain's too much. I just want to die. Her mother's been faithfully watching our broadcast, praying for her family, saying, God, I want my family to be saved. I want them to know you, Jesus. There's hope. And here's this girl. She's under protective care in a hospital bed, and she doesn't know what to do. She's stuck in this room, and she's got her phone. So what does she do? She goes on social media, and she goes on Facebook, and she's scrolling, and she sees her mom's repost of the broadcast. She clicks it when she goes on. My buddy Ben Hughes is there, and he looks at the camera, and only God can do this. He says, there's a girl that's here right now. You just try to commit suicide. God wants you to know that there's hope. This girl testifies after that the presence of God comes into her hospital room. She said, for the first time, depression lifted, suicide lifted. She said, for the first time, I felt like I wanted to live. I started jumping up and down in that hospital room, and I knew that I was completely, totally healed. That very girl gave her life to Jesus Christ. So we started seeing things happening online, and I'll be honest, I, I was probably the biggest skeptic. Because things would go on in my head being like, is this really real? Are people getting saved? You know, what, what's going on? And then God challenged me and he said, I want you to start to tell people every day how many people are, are, are saying yes to Jesus. I said, God, I don't want to do that because I know, I know what people are going to think. Because when evangelists do that, they're going to say they're, they're about the numbers, they're about this, they're about this. He said, it's not about that. It's about making a statement that in the midst of COVID, 2020 will be, not be defined by a virus. It'll be defined by harvest. And if I can inspire one person. <laughs> one person. To say, you know what? I am a voice of revival. Ruth Heflin, a revivalist, used to say this. She said, the spirit of prophecy is a, is a voice of revival. In Revelations, it says that the testimony of Jesus 
is the spirit of prophecy. I want to tell you something, friend. When you testify of what God has done in your life to somebody, it releases the spirit of revival. It releases the voice of revival. You are that voice, and your voice matters. And we started releasing words every day. We start going for souls. We minister over people. We prophesy. We pray for the sick. We've seen incredible miracles. We've had multiple people that have wanted to kill themselves, set free from depression, oppression. We had a, a Muslim family in like probably the second week of our broadcast. The husband from, I, by the way, from Iran. I love this. This is, this is hilarious. The husband, devout Muslim, gets on our broadcast and starts to trash me. Like, I love, like, can I tell you something right now? I like online. You know why? People are so much bolder behind a screen. They'll actually tell you what they think. Because sometimes we're like, oh, God bless you, brother. And we're thinking inside, yeah, 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 sure, sure, sure. Why? Because we, we judge so often in our head. And this guy gets up, and, and he's just being real. He's like, this Jesus stuff is baloney, all this stuff. Well, we just keep motoring on. Because the truth is, we can't, we can't make it happen. We can't try to convince somebody that they need Jesus. It takes a touch from Jesus to do that. We're just in sales. He's in management. <laughs> if people got a problem, talk to him. <laughs> So what do we do? We just create space, and we just said there's, there's people here that God wants to heal, and we said there's someone here with a 20-year back condition. Jesus wants to heal you. What we didn't know was that man's wife was also watching, and she was hungry because she was hearing about miracles. She had a 20-year back condition, and when we said that, the power of God came on this woman's back, and she was completely, totally healed, and the very guy that was trashing us online started to be like, this is real. Like, this is crazy. What's going on? And their whole family gave their lives to Jesus Christ. <laughs> I can't. I don't know what it is, Archie. I just cry every. I'm a mess. I cry every time I, I talk. I just, I, I know. People ask me, it's like, is, is, is this it? Is this where we're going? I just said, I don't know if this is where we're going, but I know it's a part of the harvest. There's people that are watching online every day. You saw the screen of a million people. Can I tell you something right now? Those same million people, if you times that right now by a thousand, one billion people go through Facebook every single month. Looking for hope, inspiration. Looking, does someone care? Does someone love me? They're on social media like crazy. The next generation's on TikTok, Instagram, all these different things. And the Lord's speaking to me. He's like, Sammy, this is not the end and be all, but it's a platform to preach the gospel. It's time for the church not just to exist in social media. It's time to occupy and dominate it with the good news of the kingdom. Because you are a voice of revival. And so up until this point, I want to give you guys a testimony, just being faithful every day. Some days we see one person get saved. Sometimes we see nobody get saved, but it's our, it's our joy to preach the gospel. I don't do this. And here's what the Lord told me, by the way. He said, when you post every day about people getting saved, you also post when nobody gets saved because it's a joy and a privilege to preach the gospel. Up until this point, and I'll... People ask me, how, like, they think I, I know what I'm doing. They're like, they're, I have pastors, for, we have pastors from all over the world being like, how do you do this, teacher, church? I'm like, I'm into this three months. I just got the water wings off, dude. Like, I, like, I don't know how this works. But I can tell you this, though, it's people like yourself. Because I went through my Facebook page, and I have majority Christians. But those that join the broadcast, they have unsaved family members, unsaved colleagues, people that come on and we don't realize this and I'm learning more about social media. The more we show up as a church, the more Facebook and the algorithm, and here's what the Lord said, you're gonna to start to use the algorithm for your advantage. When the church has been complaining that Facebook is shutting down posts, he said, we need to start to take advantage of our advantage in this season, start showing up because there's an algorithm that's out there that's not biased. Today, friend, I'm gonna tell you something right now, it's not religious and it looks at things like this right now. If all of us decided to share the broadcast right now and if we lived in all 
of us live in Edmonton or Stony Plain, you know what Facebook would say? Wow, there's something really good going on here in this area. People need to hear about it. Just by people sharing the broadcast, you are utilizing the engine of Facebook to get it out there. I have talked to Facebook people and they said, we can't stop you doing it. Because it's the very engine that makes the money. <laughs> Do you know what that means? Okay, I'm coming down. No, no, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right here. There's side cameras too. Oh my goodness, I'm loving church. <laughs> that means every grandmother, every grandfather, every person should have a Facebook account, social media, even if you don't have anybody except for one or two people. Because the moment you share the broadcast, according to Facebook, you're standing up and you account for a whole group of people. The more of us start sharing the broadcast, all of a sudden that word gets out there to more people organically. I feel like God did it so easy. We talk about sharing our faith. Facebook has a button called share for crying out loud. It doesn't get easier. <laughs> share. If you don't want to share the gospel, we'll help you. It's amazing. Up until this point right now, eight weeks as of today, eight weeks we've done this. We've had 484 people say yes to Jesus Christ in eight weeks. Over half of them, for sure, are first-time decisions. The other half are those that have known about God. Probably I would say about, let's say, let's say about 25% of those have known about God. They've gone to church. They've walked away. They've come back. There's another 25% that used to go to church said, forget it. But I'll tell you this right now, 100% of them, 100% of them were not active in their church didn't care about going to church, wasn't trying to move the needle of the kingdom forward. Now we have an army that's raising up, that's prophesying to their friends. We have what we call e-evangelists that are going out there on their social media platform. You guys, there's, there's something called TikTok. Have you ever heard of TikTok? Some people are like, that's China's thing. Forget that, man. TikTok, we have TikTok evangelists. We have 15, 16 year old girls preaching the gospel on TikTok sharing their faith, and they're seeing their friends get saved every single day. Why? Because you are a voice of revival. How many can say amen? And I want to say this, if I can transition into the word really quickly. I asked the Lord, I said, what's the message for today? And here's what the Lord spoke to me. He said, we're in the day of the rise of Peter's. Anybody here relate to Peter in the Bible? As a Robinson, I feel like I relate to Peter so much. There's so many times when you read about Peter, you're like, you shouldn't have said that, bro. <laughs> and it's fascinating with Peter. And if I can say this, and I want to I try to summarize this very quickly for you. I feel like Peter, for so many people, hits home. And it's amazing because the Lord spoke to me and said, study his life. And when you read Luke chapter 5, I won't get into this. But Luke chapter 5 and John chapter 21, and that's the passage I'm going to get into in a moment, John 21 out of the New King James. But in Peter's life and his conversations with Jesus, I don't know if we all know this, but Peter's interactions first start and end with fishing. Did you know that? It starts and ends with fishing. And in Luke 5, we see Jesus coming onto the scene. He's at, you know, he's at the sea. There's people following him. There's a big deal. And the Bible says that there's Peter, there's the guys over there. They're, they're the fishermen. They're washing their nets. They're professionals. This is what they do. They're fishermen. And Jesus comes on. I don't know about you, but if you're a professional today and someone tells you what to do that's not in your profession, does that rub you the wrong way? When someone comes to Pastor Archie and says, you know, Pastor Archie, you could be a better pastor if you just did this, this, and this. And you're just like, bro, you've never pastored a day in your life. <laughs> or if someone comes to your contractor and be like, you know what, you could build that house better. You're like, you don't even know how to spell hammer. <laughs> and we get this. And, and can you imagine? Here's Jesus. And he's, he's, you know, he's already popular. There's stuff going on. But he's not a fisherman. And he looks at these guys in Luke 5. And I can only imagine the scenario if you put yourself 
in their shoes. They're washing their nets. They've caught nothing. They're probably discouraged. They're probably upset. They're tired, sweaty. Sounds like a bad workout class. And all of a sudden, Jesus looks at them and says, hey, go out again. (laughs) Cast your net on the other side. And when you read the interaction, (laughs) you can almost see the sarcasm of Peter talking to Jesus, being like, Master, at your words, we'll do this thing. And I'm probably, you know what I'm probably thinking if I'm Peter? Do you even know what you're talking about here, dude? Like, I do this for a living. This is my job. I do this. Jesus, number one, yes, you're popular. Yes, all these things. But, dude, come on. So they go out there. I think they go out half-heartedly. I don't know if if you've ever done anything half-heartedly for the Lord before. God says to do it. You're like, I don't know. Okay, I'll do it. And all of a sudden, you do it. And it's chaos. It just, things start to break through. The Bible says there was so much fish that come in. They were afraid that the nets were going to break. The boats were going to sink. It sounded like a bad revival meeting. I mean, all this stuff was going on. And the Bible says that Peter, in that moment, is so shocked. And the revelation of who Jesus is, what happens in Luke 5? He says, depart from me, Lord, for I am a wicked man. And we see this initial conversation with Peter. Now, here's the fascinating thing. Fast forward to John 21. And I want to talk to you. If you've got your Bibles, turn with me to John 21. Because we see another testimony of a casting your net on the other side. But here's the wild part. The wild part about the whole thing is it's not the same testimony. It's another experience The first one was pre-death. The second one was resurrected, Jesus. And I want you to get something because we see a transition in the life of Peter from his initial conversation to his last conversation. I want you to get me here. Luke chapter 5, he has a revelation. He's a wicked man. Jesus, why do you want to have anything to do with me? Fast forward three and a half years being with Jesus. I don't know about you, but man... He probably had some incredible highs with Jesus. Can you imagine what it would have looked like to see water turn to wine? What would it look like to see a resurrection from the dead? What would it look like to see a blind man receive his sight? The Bible says that there were times of the press where there's so much stuff happening. Can you imagine the energy in that, like, in that meeting? It would be nuts, but also the incredible lows. Maybe like some of us have experienced. The lows of... We tell the Lord, Lord, I'll I'll never deny you. But yet when it comes down to it, when he has an opportunity to tell who he is and who Jesus is, he can't do it. I'm going to be honest with you, friends. I've been there in a place where we talk about, okay, I'm a Christian. But when it comes to sharing our faith, has anybody ever felt like you really want to, but it's like you just don't know how or you feel like you can't take that step? When it comes down to actually doing it, it's like, I just feel like I'm coming up short. I'm going to be real with you. That was me. And I preach the gospel in pulpits and I have great sermons, but I'm going to tell you something right now. When it came to sharing the gospel every day, I myself struggled with that. And if we were really real, if I could shoot very straight, I think all of us have a hard time to do that. And I'm not condemning anyone, but it's a reality that we live in where our spirit is willing, but our flesh is weak. There's elements where we wonder, God, we know that we're called to do this, but why don't we do this? And we see Peter, a guy that lived with Jesus for three and a half years. He's denied him. He's probably discouraged. John 21 goes on to say, and let's just turn there because this is fascinating. John 21 says this in verse 1. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And this way he showed himself. Now listen, that was the second time. Simon Peter, verse 2, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and the two others of his disciples were together. Verse 3, Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. And I find that fascinating because Jesus has revealed himself. Luke 5, he's fishing out of profession. John 21, 
He's no longer a professional. He now fishes out of passion. Can I tell you something, friend, what's happening in the body of Christ right now is a sign of the rise of Peter's. We're shifting from professional Christians to living out a passionate lifestyle of following Jesus. I'm tired of being a professional Christian. I'm tired of coming up here and saying, listen, this is the way to do it. But when it comes, when the rubber hits the road, coming up short, I'm tired of talking and preaching revival and prophesying revival, but not being revival every day. And we see here, there's a heart change. He's not in it for the resource. He's not in it for the popularity. He's in it because he's just passionate about it. I'm going fishing. Friends, what does it look like to remember when you first came to church? Was it about the hype? Was it about who was leading worship? You're just excited to come to church. Worship God. You're just excited to talk to somebody about Jesus because you know the pit that he took you out of and you know what he puts you in right now. There's a passion that's coming back to the church. And we see this with Peter. He says, he's going out fishing. And it says here, they said to him, we are going with you also. Because how many know Jesus starts showing up? It's going to freak you out a little bit. And they're like, we're going to go with you. Look at this. They went out and immediately got into the boat. Now look at this. And that night, someone say night. Look at this. And that night, they caught nothing. Even in the midst of their passion, even in the midst of the change, they caught nothing. Have you ever felt like you're like, I'm going to do it? I'm going to share my faith. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to be a witness. And you talk to someone and it's flat. And you're like, God, what's going on? And you're like, man, Lord, what's happening? And we do it again. And you feel like you caught nothing. Can I tell you something, friend, right now in Canada? It might feel like dark times are here and we haven't caught much, but how many know there's a promise from the Lord that in the midst of darkness, light's going to shine? In the midst of when things get darker, Isaiah 60 is still true today. Arise and shine for your light has come for the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And yes, there might be deep darkness. Yes, times might get tough, but there's a hope. Because our hope is not in who's in government. Our hope is not in, in our economy. Our hope is not... Oh. Our hope is not in the things of this world. But my goodness, do we need to tell ourselves sometimes and remind ourselves our hope is firmly rooted in the love of Jesus Christ, the unshakable covenant that God has for you. And if he has you in the palm of his hand, no demon in hell can take you out of that place. And we see this that they catch nothing. And I feel like we've been in this season where we prophesied harvest, we prophesied revival, and it's like our churches get smaller. But here's the word. Because it goes on to say this. But, someone say but. Look at this, verse four. But when the morning had now come. How many know with every night season, there's a morning that comes? I believe we're in that moment right now. It might look dark out there, but there's a morning that is here for you right now. But the morning had come. And look at this. It goes on to say, Jesus stood on the shore. Yet the disciples did not know it was Jesus. Can I tell you something, friends? We're in a moment of time right now where I believe many of us, we're trying to move forwards in what God's called us to do, but we feel like we're coming up short. And we look around and it feels like it's getting dark. But here's the promise. There's a morning that is coming. And not just a morning that is coming. Jesus is standing at your shore. The answer to your problem, the, the answer to your family, the answer to that healing in your body, that Jesus is standing at your shore today. But I'll tell you something. Many times he's coming in a different form. My dad said this to me so often. And I believe he said it to me for years for this moment. He said, Sammy, revival is always different than what you think. But if you embrace it, it'll be greater than what you could ever expect. When we started seeing people get saved online, my head said, that's impossible. How does this work? You know why? I couldn't translate the virtual seeing numbers on the top of a screen of views and thinking, how does that all work? I don't understand it. And here's what the Lord told me. He said, tell the church 
that virtual converts are coming in. I said, what? He said, call them, they're VCs, virtual converts. I said, what does that mean? He said, just like the world had a hard time with virtual currency, like Bitcoin. You guys ever heard of Bitcoin? Do you know, I have friends that bought Bitcoin at the very, very beginning. Like, I mean, when it was like 100 bucks. Can I tell you something? I thought they were crazy. They spent $5,000. I thought you were the, you're the weirdest person I ever heard. They said, Sammy, virtual currency is coming. I'm going to do this. I said, you got to be nuts. You know what I'm thinking right now? Man, I should have went with them with the 5000 myself. You know why that $5,000 turned into over a million dollars in less than two years? See, it becomes very real when people start buying stuff with it. Can I tell you something about virtual converts? It becomes very real when they start showing up in your church. It becomes very real, church. Get ready. Even in Edmonton, we've been, we've been helping people find churches. And pastors are phoning me. Be like, Sammy, this works. It's just different than what you think. And again, I'm not saying this is the only way. But my goodness, there's a world that's out there that's looking for answers. And if we're not the voice, somebody else will. And I refuse to allow someone else that does not know Jesus, that has wrong intention, influence, especially my kids and my grandkids. I'm telling you guys, if we don't speak, who will? You are a voice of revival. And here we see this. It goes on to say, and I love this in verse 5. Then Jesus said to them, children, have you any food? Talk about Jesus being cheeky. Hey, guys, you, got it? you catch anything? Jesus knows they didn't catch anything. Why are you asking that? You know why? Because Jesus is different than what you think. Can I tell you right now, some of you today, you know what Jesus is saying? Hey, how's that working for you? That bugs us. And it definitely bugs the religious spirit. We're like, not good, God, not good. You told me if I would do this, this is going to happen. God's like, well, how's that working for you? Can I tell you right now? Can I shoot very straight? Very straight. Some of us today, the truth is, I feel like we've tried so much. We've tried our conferences, we've tried our prayer gatherings, we've tried our fasting, we've tried all these different things. I'll be honest with you, it's a lot simpler than what we think. Some people are not going to like this, but I'll tell you this right now. It's not by our efforts that people get saved, but it's by the work of grace through Jesus Christ. And the truth is, if we would just get back to preaching the gospel, I'm telling you right now for myself, I wake up every day more alive now than ever before because I can talk about the hope that is found in Jesus Christ, not the hope that's found in my ministry, not the hope that's found in, I'm talking right now, and I love all this other stuff. God wants to do all, listen, he wants to, he wants to give you health, he wants to give you prosperity, but I want to tell you something right now, even greater than that, he wants to give you hope. Because rich or poor, I don't care what you have today. People are looking for hope. And I can say this with all passion today. Friends, the world is looking. And we see this with Jesus. He says, children, do you have any food? They're like, no. Jesus says, cast your net on the right side. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Cast your, what, God, that's like, how many feet is that? That's not even socially distanced. <laughs> cast your net on the other side? Sometimes all it takes is one degree. The word repent means to change the way you think. Can I tell you right now, the greatest lies of the enemy are not the ones that get you to spin 180. They're the ones that get you just to turn one degree. If you can get your focus off of the mission today, which has always been, always, always been to be his witness if he can get us to focus just off a little bit, to just, just, hey, focus over here. This is good. And it's not that it's not, it, God doesn't want to give it to you, but I'm going to tell you this right now. Good things are always enemies of best things. And we need it all. But I'm going to tell you this right now. You know what we need right now? We need harvest. We need people encountering Jesus. We're in a time right now where the world is looking for answers. And I love this. Jesus says, cast your net on the right side. You know what the Lord told me? He said, Sammy, you want to know what that right side is? I said, what? He said, it's the social media network. I said, what? 
He said, there's a harvest that is coming online. Sammy, get ready. Billions of people are looking online. He said, it's time to cast your net. That's what we're doing. We're just casting our net. And then we pull it in. And you wait for 30 seconds before you hear a little yes, Jesus, like a little minnow. All of a sudden, another one. And another one. And another one. And another one. And all of a sudden, you get to 50 and 100. And you think, who's going to disciple them? You ever thought that? Some people ask me, what, you know, are you discipling them? You know what I tell people all the time? I said, listen, you're more than able to help us, by the way. It's amazing. How many people are like, you should disciple? And then I say, can you Yeah, perfect, help us. It gets really quiet. Arch, you know what's crazy? So we're like, what do we do? God said this. He said, follow the pattern of John 21. I said, what's the pattern of John 21? Look at this. They cast their net, this is verse 6, on the right side of the boat, and you'll find some. So they cast, and they were not, look at this, and now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude. Someone say multitude. The multitude of fish. They were not able to pull in the fish. There were so many. Here's what the Lord told me. He said, you want to know the strategy to disciple people that have got saved online? I said, yes. He says, keep them in the water. I said, what do you mean? He's like, the issue in Luke chapter 5 is that the harvest was so chaotic. He said, because they were trying to pull them out of their environment and into the boat. He said, too many times we as ministries or churches are trying to pull people out of their environment, how they got saved and into a church environment. And he said, Sammy, just like fish, if you shock them too quickly, too fast without changing their environment slowly, he said, you're going to kill them. He said, if they got saved in the water, keep them in the water. If they get saved online, create online discipleship, get online pastors. He said, keep the people in the water. Then I realized, I'm like, that's not as hard as I thought. We can make videos. We can do all this stuff. We started creating three-minute videos. We have something right now called My Kingdom Life. We have over 1,100 people that have signed up to get discipled. 1,100 people in a couple of weeks. 70% of those are either first-time conversions or rededications from not just our ministry, from other evangelists. For the first time, they said, Sammy, we feel unchained. We feel like we can just drop new believers into this. So we have a whole group of people. They ask them questions. You know, how did you get saved? Is this your first time getting saved? Is this a rededication? You know, do you have a family? Where are you at spiritually? Where do you live? You know what I was doing last night at one o'clock in the morning? I was finding two teenagers a church in the UK because they gave their lives to Jesus. Can I tell you right now, all the bickering all, any kind of stuff that goes on. Can I tell you something about harvest? It removes all of that. You don't have time to be like, I don't like this church. I don't like that church. We have to say, I need every church. And it's amazing because the very man, <laughs> the very man that thought he blew it, he missed it, Peter. The story goes on to say in John 21, I won't, I won't read the whole thing, but the story goes on to say that John the Beloved turns to Peter and says, that's the Lord. And the very man in Luke 5, when he had a revelation of who Jesus is, he said, depart from me from I'm a wicked man. But in John 21, he's now spent life with Jesus and he knew, I can't run away from that guy. He's everything to me. And some of you, you feel that way right now. And I'm, I'm shifting this right now. And I want to bring this home. Some of you, you feel this right now. You feel like you've been out of place. You feel like you don't have a home. You feel like right now you're just spinning your tires. And you feel like Peter. You feel like you've blown it. And you missed it. And you don't know what to do. And you struggle with that. Because you feel like your life's been defined by your mistakes. And so often the devil likes to remind us, man, look at what you blew. You blew that marriage, you blew that job, you blew your health, you blew your finances, and it's so easy to get caught up in the circle of all the stuff that we're not. And I've been there. And we see this with Peter, a guy that feels like he blew it. He made a, the biggest mistake. He told Jesus he wouldn't deny him. Now, he denied him three times. Not once, not twice, three times. And he's in this moment, and he's in a boat, and he's fishing. They're not catching anything. And the one 
The Bible says that Jesus loves to turn to him and says, that's the Lord. I believe he knew he had a moment. Just like you, right now in this room, there's moments in our life that define us. One of those moments for me is the moment I met my wife. If you've ever met my wife, I married way up. Let me tell you that right now. If you ever look at a spouse and you wonder how did that happen, it's called more glory, friend, let me tell you. I remember the day that she came down the aisle, I just cried. Maybe like some of you just thought, my goodness. I remember the day that each of my kids were born, especially my middle child, Taylor. I was <laughs> going to a conference. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. And I land in Toronto where I get the, the text, Sammy, my water broke. <laughs> I'm not going to that conference. I turn around. I have to stay at a hotel that night. I'm praying in tongues, oh Lord, if she has this baby without me, she will never let this down. It will be on my tombstone. <laughs> I know my wife. <laughs> and, she, and I'm literally freaking out. I'm wondering, God, help me. I, oh, now, I, I will say this though. You ever want the best service you've ever had? at an airport? Just tell them your wife's having a baby. My goodness, it was like I had the VIP card for everything. I, 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 the, someone said, Cal, can I help you? I said, my wife's having a baby. Come with me, sir. Skip the whole line. His wife's having a baby. Congratulations. Here's first class. Thank you very much. Come with me. How can I help you? My wife's having a baby. Come to the front of security. Nobody complains. I want to use it now, but I'm lying. <laughs> I remember racing home. I get home. I get in the car. I, 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 you know, and here's the deal. It's right around the time when we first moved to Edmonton. I, yeah, I did. <laughs> I remember driving like a madman. Wondering what she's going to look like. I get there, and <laughs> Kristen looks at me, and she says, about time. <laughs> There's moments in your life that really define you. And I believe we're in a moment right now where you're going to look back, and you're going to say, something happened today because I, I made a choice. Because the truth is you're not a victim of circumstance, but you do live out your choices. And I believe that the Lord is setting up right now opportunities. I want to hit home right now. Because maybe there's people in this room today, you've heard about God. Maybe you, you used to go to church. But right now you know in your heart you're not living for the Lord. And you know that you don't know him today. I want to tell you something. There's hope. I've shared this on my broadcast many times. Most of you have probably met my mom, Shirley Robinson. I want to share this one last thing. I want to give an opportunity today. My mom, Shirley Robinson, most, one of the most amazing people I've ever met in my life. Her mother struggled with mental illness. And if you ever struggled with depression or suicide, it's very real. And I'm so sorry if people just say, well, you know, just deal with it. I'm so sorry. Because talking with my mother, I, I, I've heard, she said, Sammy, my mom dealt with mental illness at two weeks old. She said, I was the youngest of seven kids. My mother couldn't take care of us. And so she literally took all the food out, all of our clothes, burnt it all, and left the house. Social services came to a house with seven naked children, no food in the house. They've been starving for two days. My mom at two weeks old was told that she had to go in foster care and she went from foster care to foster care and the very thing that was on her mother, my grandmother, was on her. And she said, Sammy, I'd go from home to home feeling like I'd never fit, feeling like nobody cared about me. Maybe this is somebody in this room. I just felt hopeless and I would act out in rage and I would tell myself, why am I doing this? And my body would just react. It would do things that I didn't want it to do. I was always mad. Age of 14 years old, I was told. She said to me, I was told that I was not fit for society. 
and I was picked up from the home that I was in from people that I did not know. I was taken in a car that I'd never been in before and driven to a place that I'd never seen and told I would live the remainder of my days in this place. Someone that would struggle with mental illness their whole life. Have you ever felt like your biography determines your destiny? Have you ever felt like you look at the totality of your life and you just feel like you've come up short? Here's my mother at the age of 14, a little girl walking up with steps of this building wondering, why am I going here? Can anyone help me? And a woman looks at her and says, honey, take a look outside because that's the last time you'll ever go outside. Can you imagine maybe some of you, you've gone through abuse, you've gone through pain, and it's very real. And I don't want to give you a Band-Aid today because that's not what you need. I don't want to give you a self-help book. I want to give you real hope, and that hope's found in Jesus Christ. Because my mother was in that place. She said, Sammy, pardon me, she said it was hell for six years. I was told I'd never get out. I was in a straight jacket in a cell, feeling like nobody cared. Did you know there's two human needs that every person needs? Number one, the knowing that you're loved. Number two, the knowing that someone sees you and that you're known. That's why people go on social media. They're always looking at their likes, their hearts. Why? Is does someone see me? Does someone love me? Even as shallow as that is, this is the reality that so many people live in every single day. And my mom, for six years in a mentally ill hospital, every day was the same, feeling like she would not get out until there was a man that came, a Baptist minister. Praise God for the Baptist. I'll never, I will never speak bad against other denominations. I won't do it because I know what they did for my mom. And this man came, the only person that would come because he believed in visiting the sick. Here's my mom. She's there and she's wondering, what is this guy doing here? Nobody comes to see us. And this man makes his rounds and he goes from person to person. My mom was the last person. There she is in a little cell and this man looks at my mom and says, Shirley, I want to tell you something. She says, what? There's hope. She's like, what do you mean hope? I've been in this place six years. I want to tell you about the hope of Jesus Christ. That there's a God that's not angry with you, that he loves you. She thought, there's no way. God loves me. Are you kidding me? Look at my life. Look what I've gone through. God doesn't like me. He's angry with me. That's maybe some of you today. You're, you're here and you wonder. You're like, man, God's angry with me. He must be punishing me. And we live our life thinking that God is a mean God that just gets kicks from beating us up every day. That's not true. The truth is he's a loving father. And I want to tell you this right now. There's a, there's a devil that's out there that wants to try to kill and destroy your life. But I'll tell you something right now. There's a grace of God that's greater than any devil today. And whatever you're struggling with, there's hope. My mom hears about the love of Jesus and she just starts, her heart starts going. She's like, well, if there's a God that loves me, I'll give him a chance. And so my mom, six years in a mentally ill hospital, told she'd never get out. She says a sinner's prayer. She said, Sammy, in my heart, I didn't know what was going to happen. I just knew I needed something different. I needed something. I needed hope. I needed love. And she said, I cried out to God, God, if you're real, I want you in my life. The moment they got to the ending of the prayer, she said, Samuel, the presence of love came on my right side. She said, I realized in that moment that God wasn't angry with me, but the God that I was looking for was a God of love. And in that one moment, she said, all the pain, the trauma, all the mental abuse, all the feelings of loneliness, she said, in that moment left, and I was completely, totally healed and in my right mind. That's for somebody here today. I want to bring it home with this. My mom has a grade three education. 
she's watching, I am so proud of you. You're the best mama son could ever ask for. I'd wake up early in the morning and hear her praying for me. No education. <laughs> Told that she'd never make it. She's written now three books. Travels the world and speaks. Gets to go to places people dream of. Why? Because, friends, there's hope. There's hope. And that hope's found in a person. It's not found in your career. It's not found in your health. It's not found in the money you have in your bank. It's found in the person of Jesus Christ. And somebody here today, this is for you. If I'm just here for you, it's worth it. There's somebody here today that needs to hear this. Because you struggle with this your whole life. You wonder if God loves you. And you don't know why. You can't serve him with all your heart. Or maybe today you're like, I, I need a help. I need someone to walk with. Because the truth is, you can't walk this life alone. You were never called to. You're called to walk with the loving God. And I believe right now we are in a moment, friend. We're in a moment of opportunity where you do not have to be defined by the mistakes and the discouragement and the hopelessness. You can turn a page today. If that is you, and I'm speaking to every person in this place, maybe it's for your first time you're here today and you're like, man, I, Sammy, I need Jesus. I need hope. I need peace. I want to do something right now. I want everybody just to close their eyes for a moment. Man, it's so much different doing this here than online. Maybe this is your first time. Maybe someone brought you to church. You're like, man, why am I here? I want to tell you something. You're here not by accident. You're here because God wants you here. He wants to give you hope. He wants to take that burden off of you. You're not supposed to carry that. There's things in life that we try to carry that we can't carry. Only God can carry. One of them is the shame of your past. Some of you today, Right now, I want to give you an opportunity to accept Jesus as Lord of your life. What does that mean? That means we've realized that we can only take this life so far on our own. And the truth is, we're not called to walk alone. And friend, I want to tell you something today. Heaven and hell is very real. And God is very concerned about where we go. And he gives us an opportunity to accept him. Where we have fallen short, the Bible says in Romans, from the glory of God, Jesus Christ in John 3, 16, the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And there's people here today, maybe this is for your first time, and you realize that you need a savior today. You can't do this thing alone. You're like that good old country song, Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> That's you today. Or maybe there's people in this room right now, you know, you've been away from the Lord and you're not 100% in. And you're like, God, I want to be 100% in. I want to give my life to you again. I want to start this thing over afresh today. I don't want to miss what you're doing, God. I don't want, to, I don't want my heart to be cold. I'll be very blunt. Some of the most depressed people that I know are Christians that have tasted of the goodness of God, but have walked away. And I believe today there is an opportunity for those to make a real commitment. And I believe what happened with my mother, that where she got delivered from mental torment, depression, I'm talking, you guys, I'm talking mental illness completely, totally healed. If that's you today, with every eye closed, every head bowed, if you want this today, you want the gift of Jesus Christ, whether it's your first time or you're rededicating your life to the Lord today, I want you to lift up your hand boldly right now. If that's you, right now. Thank you, Jesus. Right now. Thank you, I see those hands. Whew. 
you, Lord. Today's going to be a new day. I want to wait. If there's anyone else, maybe today that's you. You're like, man, Sammy, I need this. I see the hands. Thank you, Lord. His presence is so real in this place. Thank you, Lord. I'm not going to lie, this is so much different, doing this in person. <laughs> I feel a little bit like a hermit. I was telling Archie. <laughs> Maybe online, too, I want to encourage you. If that's you, just type, yes, Jesus. You're like, I want this. Yes, Jesus. So here's what I want to do. I want to, those that put up their hand, you know what, we can all say this today. And, and Archie, is there... Is there a place where those that have said yes to Jesus, is there information or something? Can they meet somewhere to get connected? They can register. If you said yes to Jesus, you can register at the information center if you put up your hand. Sorry, yeah, I'm so used to doing this online here. If you put up your hand, I want you to go to the information center and, and just register your name. They want to stay connected with you. But guys, can we all say this today? I want to say a prayer. This isn't a religious prayer. This is a prayer of invitation to walk with Jesus. I believe Jesus is going to turn a page today. And many people, your heart is coming back. I just see hearts being ignited, hearts being, I just, they're burning again. Some of you, passions being restored back in your life again. The, the, the passion of first love is coming back today. And so if we can say this, all of us, I, there's something about doing this together. Dear Jesus, Thank you that you love me. Thank you that you gave your life for me. Jesus, today, I ask that you would forgive me of my sins. I want you to be Lord of my life. Jesus, I want to walk with you. And I want you to be my best friend. Fill me with your presence. Fill me with your peace. Fill me with your joy and fill me with your love. I am yours and you are mine. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, can we just give a huge <laughs> clap today? I know there's quite a few today that are either for the first time or rededicated. This is awesome, you guys. But if I can end with this, can I have two more minutes? I want to end with a prayer for all of us. The best is yet to come. And my prayer is that we would shift from, like Peter, from a place of profession to passion. And if you can, I just, just open up your hands like you're receiving a gift. I just... I'm going to sit down for a second. I'm <laughs> All I do is cry. <laughs> Partly Bobby Connors' fault. He told me, he said, young man, you're going to weep for the harvest uh, every day. <laughs> oh, Jesus. We love you. And God, I'm asking today, Lord, that you would restore our first love back again. God, that you would give us a heart of flesh if there's been stone. And Lord, if we felt like Peter, where we've been in a place of profession, maybe really good at doing religious duties, Lord, we want to come back to the place of passion. God, where it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Lord, I'm asking today, would your love your liquid love, how you touched my mother when it come on every person in this room. God, that we would cry, we would weep for souls, God. That, Lord, that those around us may know you. Because you are the hope. Jesus, you are a revival. Not an event, not a service. Jesus, you are a revival. And Lord, we're asking today, God, that you would just come down 
And Lord, that you would abide, that there would be a habitation, God, in Lighthouse Church. A habitation of your presence. God, let us be known as a people of your presence. Let Lighthouse Church, God, be known as those, like the disciples, when people saw them, they recognized that they had been with Jesus. God, in this room, would you quicken us to see like Jesus said to his very own disciples, do not say it's four months till harvest, but lift up your eyes. For the harvest is ripe right now. And I just speak to every one of you today, right now, that you have loved ones that are not saved. I thank you, God, for children coming back to the Lord. I thank you, God, for spouses encountering Jesus. I thank you, God, right now, extended family and colleagues getting saved. God, I thank you for boldness. Lord, let parents text their kids. And Lord, let them prophesy life over their kids. Let them prophesy life over their grandkids. Because we will see family revival in our generation. We will see it. And Lord, let out of this house. I, I just see it right now. I, I'm telling you, I see flags all over this house. Let this house be known as the house of nations. Lord, I just prophesy right now over this house right now. I'm, I'm telling you right now, I feel like I'm going into a vision right now that there's gonna, I see flags of nations in this house, Lord, that this house is gonna welcome the nations. God says, get ready because you've asked me for the nations and I will give you the nations. I will give you the nations from the north, the south, the east, and the west. I will bring people to Stony Plain, Alberta by the spirit of the Lord. I will bring them from the Philippines. I will bring them from the UK. I will bring them from Africa. I will bring them even from the United States of America. And they will come to Stony Plain. I will call them. I will call them. I will whistle to them and they will come. For God says that this is a house for many nations. That this is a house that many people, many tribes, many tongues will call home. That the banner, I'm telling you right now, there will be the, 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 I just see nations coming in. Nations, God says nations, they will come in. Lord, do it in this place. And I thank you, Lord, right now. Lord, I thank you for Cam and Jen. Lord, I thank you for who they are. Lord, what you've called them to. And God says that my grace is sufficient even in the place where you feel weak. That the Lord is saying that there's a strength that you didn't even know that you had, that God is he's putting to the forefront right now. And the Lord says, just keep leaning on me and trusting in me because as you take step by step, you're taking ground. Every step you're taking is a ground. I'm talking is, is you're moving forwards. It's ground that you are taking step by step. Even if it's one step, God says you're taking ground step by step by step. And when you look back, it's not just a step, but you guys are building a freeway for the nations. Out of Lighthouse Church, get ready right now, I can see it. There will be a massive missions movement that will come out of Lighthouse Church. That is, this, this house will affect many, many nations. Many people are going to get literally birthed out of prayer. They're going to get saved and they're going to get launched into the nations all over the world out of this house. God says, out of Stony Plain, out of Stony Plain, Alberta. Get ready, out of Stony Plain, it will be released. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Thank you very much. It's a joy to be with you today. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to uh, stay online here for another little bit here. Uh, I just want to activate the gift that's in Sammy, too, uh, that he might have a word for somebody in the house. But... Uh, uh, so we had a, a request online here uh, come in for Wendy Walling. Uh, it looks like fibromyalgia. Is that right, Cam? And uh, so she just got diagnosed with it. So uh, my sense as I got that just here a minute ago, um, well, I got the note a little while ago, but a minute ago, I got a, a sense there's people watching online, and you've been diagnosed with cancer too. And so I just want to say right now that we're going to pray for not only Wendy, but we're going to pray for anyone out there that has fibromyalgia and that you can call us and tell us that, uh, uh, that you've been healed and that you've had a touch of God on your, on your life. Uh, 
because of it. So, Lord, we just pray for Wendy right now. We release the healing power of Jesus into Wendy's life. And we say fibromyalgia, that you will dry up, you'll disappear, you'll be gone in Jesus' name, and you will not survive in her body anymore. We curse cancer in Jesus' name. And we say that, Wendy, the power of God is coming on your life right now. The glory of the Lord is made manifested on your head. You can feel the warmth of his presence. Let it flow right through your body now. And that this cancer is diminishing in Jesus' name name and the doctors will be able to prove it and so those of you that are online receive that word as well that God is healing you in your body in Jesus name thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord and so uh, uh, have you got a word for anybody else yes. here uh, okay yeah go for it now we, we'll we do we'll this stay, we'll keep we it do online. this a lot with online and in here I when Archie said that there's someone if you're either online or in this room right now you've got a degenerative thing going on in your back and it's caused severe pain and mobility issues. The Lord wants to heal you right now. And uh, Lord, I just, if that's you in the room too, just put up your hand if that's you. Is that, is curious? just Lord, I thank you for healing. I thank you for those that are watching right now. There's healing that's being released online in this room. I can yeah, see there's angels here. going on. Guys, if you're around people that need a miracle, just stretch out your hands towards that. We do this online. We encourage those you. right now. Just there's a releasing of healing that's just taking place. This is by the Spirit of the Lord right now. Lord, we just receive. We don't have to work for it. This isn't something you have to work up. I thank you, God. It is a gift from the Lord. Healing is a gift from the Lord. Lord, we just release it now in the name of Jesus right now. There's, there's somebody even to online right now. I, and uh, I don't know, is there a way that we can... Um, communicate with those that are online. Can you, can someone communicate yeah, online yeah. with me? There's someone that's online. You've got like a, it feels like a band around your head and it's like a pressure. And I know there's, this is going to be interesting because there's people on here, but there's also people in this room right now. You get like a rubber band pressure around your head. Who are you in this room as well? But there's someone that's watching online. If I could get their name, God's going to touch them. If that's you, where you feel like a pressure on your head, just put up your hand. If that's you, Lord, I thank you just for releasing of healing right now in Jesus name. Lord, we just thank you for that healing taking place right now. Lord, we break off the pressure off the head right now in the name of, I just see like Jesus snapping a band right now in Jesus name. Lord, thank you for it right now. Wow. In There's Jesus name. called Snowbird. Snowbird. Is, is that from Africa? Don't know. Where? Okay. Where did Snowbird? Yes. So Lord, I just thank you for Snowbird wherever you are. That's an awesome name, by the way, right now. That's very Canadian. Um, Lord, we just thank you for just healing the head right now. Here's what I want to do. God's going to break off the trauma of your previous season. If Archie, if you can watch, this is, this is what I love about social interaction. They're not in the room, but you can still receive from God. There's been trauma that's come against you. Word curses. Like I saw words that were against you that was on, felt the pressure on your head, but also too on your neck. God's going to heal you right now. So uh, uh, Jeremy said, yes, he wants Jesus in his life today. Come on, Jeremy. Come on. Thank you, Lord. There's people right now that are, are going to get saved on three people, three, three online today. Come on. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. There's, but there's a whole thing with the head that's being healed right now in Jesus name. There's who's over here in this section of the room. I can feel this in the room. You've got a shoulder issue. Your shoulder's been tweaking like right here in this room. There's someone here. Your shoulder's been off and on. Where are you? I can feel this. I know that's you in the back. I actually felt it was right in the back. The Lord wants to just touch you. There's multiple things in your body, right? That need healing. It's like you need an overhaul in your body. Does that okay. make sense? Stand up. Yeah. Please. Stand up here. Uh, can, can we bring you up? Come here. Come well, here. We're not supposed to touch anybody. Oh, oh sorry. Up. Sorry. He can come up here Man. and stand six feet from you. Six yeah. feet. Six feet. You're online, right? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> we are following social distancing. I just, I love heaven because heaven Heaven angels oh, snow, are all uh, around snowbirds you. Snowbirds from Northwest Territory. Come on, that's awesome. Oh, Kakwe. Oh, wow. A Kakwe. All right. A ca come on, that's awesome. Archie's giving me the play by play. This is amazing. <laughs> but uh, the, what's your name? Vic. Vic. God wants to heal you, Vic, right now. There's like some trauma or something from like, was there an accident or something? Yeah. Yeah. Head on collision. 
head on collision. I saw, and there's been a whole bunch of stuff in your body that the Lord just wants to just bring into alignment right now. Lord, for Vic, Lord, I thank you for Vic too. Vic, you got a soft heart for people. And I just see right now the Father's love just coming over you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet right now. I don't know what, what, what was with your father, but I just saw that the revelation of the Father's love and that you're going to raise up a lot of, I see young men that have never had a dad, that God's going to use you. you got a heart for especially those that feel down on themselves because you went through a season where you felt really down on yourself. You actually, I feel like too, there was some depression, some stuff that you battled and you overcame. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah the Lord is just, he's, he's going to use your story of hope and that where there was traumatic experiences, even from when you're a kid, the Lord's saying that you have a testimony for the next generation of young people that felt abused and sent out. I see peep kids that were kicked out of their home and that they, they have no home, that God is going to use you to raise up homes for kids. I can just see this. And I see people that have never had a home. And that's always been a desire in your heart to make a home for family. And uh, because there were times where you felt that yourself. And the Lord is saying that he's going to raise you up to literally help those to bring people into family that have never never had family before and he's touching your body right now in the name of Jesus right now Lord we just speak healing and strength over you because you have so much to do in this season and God is not done and what he started in you he will complete in Jesus name wow, wow, amen wow, wow, God wow. bless you sir thank you yeah. does that make sense yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome I can vote for that Ooh, come on this is now can I tell you just the, the simple truth is we do this also online, and it's no difference because the glory of God knows no time or distance. Yes. I think one of the things that I've, I've just been humbled by, to be honest, is that it has very little to do with me. People think, they're like, how do you do this? Honestly, my job and all of this is about this much. It's Jesus and it's those that are watching, that are stretching out their faith, that are believing. I want you, if you got one thing is this, you are a voice of revival. Come on. There's a, uh, whew, the woman in the back, uh, very, very back, uh, the, there's like a light switch behind you, I think. My eyes, Lord, heal my eyes yeah. right now. Um, yeah, can you just stand? K. Yeah, K. I just see the Lord touching your family. I don't know what this is. I just see family that you've been <laughs> praying for, that you've been, and it's been something really burdening on your heart in this last season. The Lord's restoring relationships in this season right now, and that what the enemy tried to separate, God is saying in this next season that there's going to be restoration of relationships, and I just see the next generation getting radically touched by the Lord. I just see right now that, to get ready, this is the time right now where the Lord's going to restore all things, where the enemy tried to use it for evil, and I even see people that spoke against you negatively, that they're going to come around and they're going to actually, they're going to rebridge, get ready for unusual divine appointments that are about to take place. So Lord, we just release it right now in the name of Jesus. Does that make sense? Come on. There's, oh, this is fun. There's a, a, a text come in that um, a Penny, a girl that's come here, lady, uh, dropped her bike on herself and she's, uh, uh, it says there, so Lord, we release healing to Penny right now in Jesus' name. I said I was going to pray for Penny. She's on right now? Penny? Okay, Penny, right now, wherever you are, stop what you're doing. <laughs> Just stop. Lord, I thank you for healing right now. And Lord, I thank you for peace. And I thank you right now. Penny, here's your word. The stress is coming off of you right now. All the stress is coming off. And that, that I just speak to that the body to be healed now. We break off the stress and the trauma of the situation. Even the frustration of, oh, I shouldn't have done. There's something about like, oh, I just, I shouldn't have done that. God's saying, just chill. I've got this for you. Lord, I thank you right now for the releasing of that peace, Lord, over her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. I wanted to pray for you. I'm glad, I'm glad you, you told me that. Lord, just release it in Jesus' mighty name. Wow. Amen. 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 Yeah. Wow. Anybody in the room never had a prophetic word before? Put your hand up. Never had, uh, never had a word like, Jamie, don't put your hand up. <laughs> Archie will tell you your phone number. No, just, 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 <laughs> 
Okay, I don't see any hands up. Anyways, I just I thought for a minute there that if there's somebody in the room that says I would really like to have a prophetic word, I'd like. Can yeah, I, yeah, go ahead. The guy, the guy right over, I don't know you. The guy right here on the front row with the uh, the gray hoodie and the glasses. Yeah, no, 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 the, right here. Yeah, yeah, you, you. I, Which one? I, I just feel like you're in transition. Yeah, Which this guy? this guy right there. Yeah, yeah. What's your name? Ryan. I I gotta. St- I have to remember. I'm a Robinson. I like the hugs, but six, to, you know, six feet. Um, but you're in transition. You're looking for answers. I feel like a door closed suddenly on you. And it, and it really shook your world. And I feel like, you know, there's a verse in the Bible, it's Isaiah 22, 22, that, you know, it talks about God opening doors no man can close and closing doors no man can open. And I feel like the Lord's been closing some old doors of your past that have tried to try to trip you up. And uh, he's opening up new doors of hope for you, that this is a season of hope. And that the things that you felt like you couldn't overcome in the previous season, they're going to be your testimony in this season. And that this is going to be a time right now where I, I just feel like, Things that looked like it was going to work, and it just, I feel like it, it brought hope deferred. God's saying it's not going to happen that way. And I feel like there's been a real battle of your hope. Is this really going to happen? And God says it's going to happen in this season for you. And that this is, and I feel like too, there's even something about like a father's blessing that's coming over you. What you didn't get, what didn't happen for you is going to happen through you. That's a word for you, because it's always been your heart. You know, in the Bible, it says Proverbs 13, 22, a good man leaves inheritance to his children's children. I see there's dreams and desires in your heart you haven't even told anybody about. I see like there's things that you want to do, like just not just for yourself, but for those that are around you. And just because I feel like you didn't have that opportunity, you're going you're gonna to give that opportunity. It's Proverbs 13, 22. It's all over you. And that this is going to be a season even too. There's something about work and transition that the Lord's doing for you right now. And it means like even just the supernatural provision and open doors. Does that make sense? to yet. There's like a new, there's something about a new transition of work that the Lord's bringing into and he's strengthening your hope. And there's actually some business ideas that are in you you haven't told anybody about. I feel like you, you've got a business mind and sometimes people haven't seen that. They, I feel like they've, they've, looked at, they've, they've looked at the cover of the book, but they haven't looked in the book. And I feel like this is a season where God's giving you relationships that are going to look in and, and work with you. And I feel like there's some good stuff inside of you. So Lord, just thank you for it right now in Jesus name. Lord, I thank you that this season, it's going to be a home run. This year is going to be a home run. This is going to be something where it's going to knock out of the park too. Yeah. And, and here's another word for you too. The frustration of the previous season, the Lord's removing right now. The word, there's been times where you felt angry. God's moving it. He's giving you peace and he's giving you love in this season right now. Because here's the word for you, is that you're going through, you're breaking through something. I feel like previous generations haven't, you're going to break through in this new season. And you're redefining what it means for your family and for everybody that's coming up after you. So Lord, just release it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah, uh, Penny just said, uh, Pe- Penny, Penny just said uh, uh, that she's walking better now since the prayer. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Give the Lord another hand. Come on now. I want, I want you to stand with me and we'll finish off with a, uh, a worship song and just invite the Holy Spirit to fill you.